Hereditary ataxias can present in almost identical ways, and while the symptoms can be so similar, the prognoses are not. Physicians are often faced with a clinical challenge of identifying the specific type of ataxia. Genetic testing can help differentiate the causes of disease, provides prognostic and inheritance information, and answer important questions the patients may have. For ataxias and hereditary spastic paraplegias, physicians may want to explore genetic testing earlier in their patient workup, as revealing the specific cause of disease can lead to more immediate interventions. We developed these testing panels based on prevalence, family history, and associated clinical sign, signs and symptoms. We believe this is the best approach to testing for large gene panels. In a paper that we published at the American Academy of Neurology, we identified that the most prevalent genes in this population are SCA type 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and 17, and represent approximately 56% of positive samples in our population. In addition, about 15% are explained by Friedrich's ataxia. We examined extensive peer-reviewed journal articles, algorithms, and research to bring you what we believe is the most efficient set of profiles available for the hereditary ataxias and motor neuron diseases. We have several profiles available for physicians and genetic counselors to choose from based on their patient's family history and clinical presentation. We also offer a comprehensive evaluation for those patients who either do not have family history available, have unclear family history, or whose symptomology is undefined. Let's consider a patient who has ataxia, a normal MRI of the brain, and a peripheral neuropathy. According to our algorithm, we would start testing for Friedrich's ataxia first, followed by supplemental testing for other causes of recessive ataxia. In this fashion, a doctor should be able to come to the correct diagnosis based on the prevalence of different genes. Similarly, with autosomal dominant ataxia, you would first start with common repeat expansion disorders, followed by a next-gen sequencing panel of less common causes. Now let's consider a patient with hereditary spastic paraplegia. For instance, if there's a family history with autosomal recessive inheritance, one would consider uh, certain genes. Based on MRI findings, for example, thin corpus callosum, one would specifically test for SPG11 and SPG15. We are very systematic in our approach to calling genetic variants disease-causing, benign, or somewhere in the middle. Athena Insight is a team of scientists specializing in pathogenicity of genetic variants found in patients. Insight scientists use a rules-based algorithm employing internal datasets, external databases, published literature, research collaborations, and client-provided phenotypes. Close collaboration among our scientists, genetic counselors, and clinical laboratory directors ensures that all relevant information has been collected and systematically analyzed in order to provide the most clinically informative results to our clients. We hear from patients and providers every day regarding the cost of testing and insurance reimbursement. When we tell them about the Athena Alliance program, they are relieved. The Athena Alliance program is our patient financial assistance program. This program helps reduce the out-of-pocket cost to the patient. It is our goal to ensure that every patient has a solution to fit their financial needs. These tests put the right tools in your hands. Guided by what you already know about your patient, their symptoms, and family history, our test selection should provide a fast and efficient solution for identifying the genetic causes of hereditary spastic paraplegias and ataxias.